Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to UPMC Park here on a beautiful Saturday evening in Erie, Pennsylvania. Sunny skies, no clouds, and just a slight breeze blowing into the outfield. You're reading a fight and fills look to snap a seven-game losing streak. And I think tonight's the night. Feel good about it. Colton Eastman on the mound for the fight and fills. And we've got a stacked lineup. Sean Williams playing around a little bit with the defensive positions today. I think it's a, it's going to be a lot of fun here as the Fightin' Phils will wear their road grays again because the Erie Steewolves stick it out in their Howlow Weekend jersey themes. It's black and neon green, and that is Erie, E-E-R-I-E. -E. Get it? Erie, Pennsylvania? It's funny, I guess. But back-to-back -back Halloween nights here. Not much theme-wise. They've got a little Halloween music on, a little bit of decorating in the park. But they're giving out these awesome caps with this Frankenwolf logo on it. So it's the Erie Seawolf logo turned into Frankenstein. I actually really dig it. But as we get ready for first pitch here, we're going to uh, throw it down to the field for the singing of the national anthem. As your Reading fight fills, get ready for first pitch here in Erie, Pennsylvania. They will have Johan Rojas leading off, Wendell Rijo batting second, Simone Muziati in the three-hole, and Jalen Ortiz as designated hitter today. Ultra Corridor playing at first base, Vito Frisia will be catching tonight. Kevin Vicuña batting seventh, Jack Conley out left today. First time in the outfield in quite some time, and A.J. Graffanino subbing in at shortstop today. As Logan O'Hoppy has the night off, Jonathan Guzman and Sal Gazzo as well available off the bench should we need them. The Fighting Phils have Colton Eastman on the mound. The righty will face righty Austin Bergner for the Erie Seawolves. The Fighting Phils have fell in four straight games here in Erie and three in Somerset. So we are looking for a win here. And I think it's going to be the game. I think this is the one. So down to the field for the singing of the National Anthem, and then we'll be back up here for first pitch in Erie, Pennsylvania. Ready for first pitch here in Erie as the Fightin' Phils will see Austin Bergner, the righty here four and two on the season with a 2-4-2 ERA in 85 and two thirds innings of work. So the starter has had a lot of time on the rubber so far this season, but they've been limiting his innings as of late, going about three or four depending on pitch count wise. So we'll see how long they give the righty today. They had to go quite into the bullpen yesterday using five pitches five pitchers, excuse me, and so um, we'll see how that, you know, kind of adds into the mix. He'll be throwing to Dylan Dingler, the number two prospect for the Tigers, back behind the plate tonight. Andrew Navagato in left, Parker Meadows in center, and Daniel Cabrera, who had the night off yesterday, out in right. Andre Lipsius at third, Gage Workman at short. 
Luis Carpio at second and Dane Myers as first as Quincy Naporti is available off the bench tonight. Evan Johnson, the crew chief, calling the balls and strikes back behind the plate as Lou Kammermeyer, the fill-in umpire, stays at third and Ray Valero managing the first base territory. Said before, Erie in these black and neon green tops with colorful logos across the front and the matching black and green brimmed cap and the home white pants. The fight fills in the road grays with the alternate cap, just the navy one today with the white F fist on the front. I'm sure they would love to be wearing their Luchadors jerseys today, but I bet that they are too similar to this Erie's jerseys because it's pretty much a black top. And uh, so I'm sure there's some ruling on that that makes them wear these road grays today, but they'll switch it up with a different cap than yesterday. As Johan Rojas is set to lead us off, Johan Wendell Rojas. Rijo and Simone Muziati all do up to start us off. And it's Sean Williams down the third baseline and of course, Mike Jones manning the first base territory. the first base side of the rubber, Bergner kicks and fires, and the first pitch of the game is upstairs at 6.08, a little bit late here in Erie. Rojas takes a called strike. As I said before, nice night, 75 degrees, clear skies, just eight miles an hour going from left to right, but Really no win there. Rojas deep to left field. Back at the wall. It bounces off the roof. Rojas, a solo shot to start off this game. That is long, long gone. Heck of a swing from Rojas. That had to be about 40 feet in the air on top of the building out and left. Just smashes the pitch from Austin Bergner. And uh, Rojas really not known as a power hitter, just his second home run here in double A, but yeah, that'll work. That'll work. Here's Wendell Riho with a one nothing lead. He slices this down the third baseline foul. Don't worry, we're getting that Rojas homer up as soon as possible. Y'all need to see that. Sky high pop up. The catcher Dingler trying to find it in the sun and he makes the catch in front of his home team dugout for out number one. That was in foul territory. Here's Simone Muziani with one on. the left side, the first lefty that Bergner will see. 31 walks to 86 strikeouts. Reddy's bat just a little bit better than lefties. Lefty's bat just 171 against him. There's a strike. Johan Rojas started us off with a lead off homer here in the first inning. One out here with Simone Muziati ahead of the count, two and one. There's strike two. Bergner out of the University of North Carolina was the Ninth round in the 2019 draft. That's pretty high. 
Muzi smacks this into left field. Going back at the wall is Navagato, and he'll make the catch for out number two. That was well struck, which is lined right to where the left fielder was standing. With two outs here is Jalen Ortiz, the hottest hitter on the team right now. Ortiz batting 417 in the last 10 games. I, I know I've talked about this before, but what he has done since the All-Star break is, or even before that, if we go back to the second half of the season, which for the fight and started on Jul or June 28th, has been nothing short of incredible. He's had 10 multi-hit games in the past two weeks as he takes a swinging strike. The radar gun not working right now here in Erie. There's a strike, down 0 and 2. I mean, it has just been amazing to watch him mature so much at the plate as he strikes out swinging there. But that will end the inning as the fight fills. A leadoff homer from Johan Rojas makes it 1 0. They take that early lead. On to the bottom half we go. Colton Eastman back in just a moment. The Seidel Auto Group Deck Picnic appeals to both die-hard and casual fans with its summer picnic-like and fun tailgate atmosphere. During your picnic, you may even catch a souvenir as the area is situated directly in prime home run territory behind the left field wall. Regular season tickets are $30 per person for groups of 20 or more, and children four and under are free. Visit fightins.com backslash groups or call 610-370-BALL to reserve your group outing today. Golden Oaks is an award-winning high-end golf club that offers golfers a country club experience without country club prices. With five sets of tees, golfers of every skill level will enjoy their game. Golden Oaks has Bogey's Pub, a beautiful pro shop, driving range, and learning center that will make any visit complete. Golden Oaks Golf Club is the perfect venue for private events and golf outings. Visit us for our newly opened golf simulators, complete with its own bar area and Bogey's Pub menu items available. You can stay in our beautifully restored 1850s farmhouse and then play our award-winning championship golf course. Each room includes full amenities, cable television, and quaint rustic decor. While on the premises, visit Bogey's Pub for lunch, dinner, or a relaxing beverage. We're ready to serve you here at Golden Oaks and look forward to the 2022 season. Johan Rojas gives us a 1-0 lead here as we head into the bottom of the first inning. We'll talk more about that leadoff homer and how rare that is in the first at-bat of the game. Obviously, the Phillies have seen it with Kyle Schwerber this summer, and it's just a really cool way to start off the game. I mean, already momentum swinging in your favor here. And a one-run lead for Colton Eastman. He'll be throwing to Vito Frisha back behind the plate. Jack Conley making an appearance in left field. Johan Rojas in center and Muziati shifting to right today as Jalen Ortiz is just the DH. Wendell Riho in the third base position. Graffinino making his debut at shortstop, although he says that's his favorite defensive position to play. And Kevin Vicuña at second, Aldrim Corridor at first. A ball and a strike here for Colton Eastman. The righty has been solid since joining the Fightins earlier this season after starting in AAA. Two balls and a strike here from the righty looking to sit down the first batter and get out number one here. Erie scored a run in the first inning yesterday. This is shot out to center. Racing back, Rojas over the shoulder, the grab. Get some burnt and snags it out of the sky, doing all the work today at the plate and in the field. And there's one away for Andre Lipsius.
Here's Andre Lipsius from the right side. Lipsius has had a home run himself in this series. This bounces over the plate, a ball and a strike. This bounces over the plate again. Two and one. Eastman, the righty, 3 2 1 ERA in the eight games he started here in double A. Sends the ball outside, three and one. 19 walks to 30 strikeouts. More of a weak contact pitcher. You'll see a lot of ground outs, a lot of pop ups. And this misses inside. All four. So a runner on here for Erie. That'll represent the tying run. Obviously with just a one nothing lead. And here is Parker Meadows, who's done a lot of damage this series. Jack Conley's last time in left field was on June 25th at Binghamton. Spent a lot of time there to start the season and then has had to fill in in other roles, catching as well. But he's seen time in all of the outfield positions, actually leads the Eastern League with 10 outfield assists. And he'll play it off that wall really well and have the bullet back in. And I think that's part of the reason why manager Sean Williams has him out there today. This is shot to first. Corridor over to Graffinino, back. And they don't get the double play, but they do get the leading runner. And good follow-up by Colton Eastman there to try to come over and cover the bag. He's just too slow and up in front of first to be able to have the time to turn two. So on the fielder's choice, Meadows is at first, but now there is two outs here. And Dane Myers up. Myers had that solo shot in the eighth yesterday that ended up being the winning run. Titanfields took an early lead. They just couldn't hold on to it late in the game. Time is called, and it's granted before the pitch comes in. So no pitch there is signified by Evan Johnson back behind the plate. Raffinino playing deep at short. Vicuña close to second here with the runner on. And Meadows has stolen nine bases this season. Pitch misses inside. One and up. Eastman looking for a clean inning of work in the first here. The Fighting Bills have given him a one run lead on Johan Rojas' solo shot to start off this game. We've had two leadoff homers so far this season. Madison Stokes. Back on April 13th, very early on in the season, and Beto Frisia back on June 10th. And the thing of it is, just so cool to, to do that early on. It wasn't the first pitch of the game, but third pitch is, is still <laughs> impressive. And Madison Stokes actually beginning a rehab assignment in the Florida Complex League, so hoping to have him back on our roster sometime soon. Way back in the batter's box is Dane Myers, three and O. Oh. Eastman out of the stretch with a runner on first and two outs. Pitch hits the top of the zone, three and one. You knew he probably wasn't going to be swinging with a walk right there. And he chooses to take that called strike. And now we'll see what Myers does here. Meadows on first, two outs. This hits, and he holds off. It's a full count. Shadows trickling from left to right here, that big Erie Insurance <laughs> Arena out and left. Yeah, 
starting to produce some shade on Jack Conley. Everybody else is standing in the sun right now. Two outs, runner on first. The Art fills a one nothing lead. Eastman looks down, here's the payoff pitch. Runner going, it's fouled back. He's gonna have to go again with, with two outs. He's gonna go on contact. Meadows shuffles off first. The payoff pitch fouled back again. And he's going to have to go back. <laughs> Trying to work up Eastman's pitch count here, offering number 19 coming in. As that was number seven to the batter, Dane Myers. Two outs, the payoff pitch, ground ball deep at third. Riho to first, and that will do it. A runner stranded on the base pass for the Erie Seawolves. The fight and fills lead one nothing, and it's their turn to bat top second coming up in just a moment. Hey, psst. yeah, you. You want to buy some low-priced groceries? Just follow me into this well-lit Lidl grocery store. Here at Lidl, we buy in bulk and cut down on costs wherever possible. Then we pass the savings on to you. Trust me. Everything's done totally legit and above board. Nothing to be worried about. Yep, Lidl's pretty great. It's just your run-of-the-mill grocery store, except with way, way, way lower prices. Lidl, suspiciously low-priced groceries. The Reading Fight and Fills, in conjunction with Savage Auto Group Fiesta Fridays, are proud to partner with EXP Realty Associate Broker Alex Patances throughout the 2022 season. Visit Alex's convenient website at brgpa.com and search for your perfect home today. His custom search bar makes house hunting online easier than ever, and he's there to answer all your questions. Call Alex today at 610-926-8610. EXP Realty Associate Broker Alex Patances is a proud partner of the Reading Fight and Fills and all 11 Savage Auto Group Fiesta Friday games during the 2022 season. EXP Realty Group and Alex Patances, where every move matters. Highline Merchandising, formerly Textiles, is your local small business company that provides screen printing, design, and merchandising services for local, national, and international businesses, bands, shows, and festivals, including seven-time Emmy Award-winning show Schitt's Creek and Unsolved Mysteries. Visit our website at highlinemerchandising.com. Aldrum Corridor to lead us off here in the top of the second. Colton Eastman got us out of the first clean. So Redding, an opportunity here to increase their one-run lead thanks to Johan Rojas' solo shot to start off this game. And here's Aldrum Corridor from the left side. Looks to lay down the bunt. Pokes it foul on the third base side. Just 13 pitches for Austin Bergner. Now, Corridor back in the box with an 0 1 count. We'll see if he chooses to lay down the bunt again. This is foul, and now he's down 0 and 2. And I imagine that uh, Bat is still on his shoulder. This is chop foul. Another one. Aldrin one for four yesterday, an RBI single early on in the game. Slowly to second, fielded by Carpio on the run. He makes a good play, and there is out number one here to start off the second. Phillies picked up a big win thanks to Reese Hoskins, the former fighting yesterday in the 10th over Pittsburgh. It's really nice to see the former 
you know, pipeline guys, the former farm system guys, guys who went through Redding, Lehigh to get to the bigs. And not even Lehigh, but Redding, really. You know, that lineup is now full of all these young players. And that's, you know, that's why they say the uh, Stars of Tomorrow play in Redding today. Here's Vito Freesha takes back-to-back -back balls below the knees. And the count moves to 3-0. and oh. Vito trying to get himself aboard to start off this game. He's the kind of guy that will be patient at the plate and wait for the right pitch to see. This one comes in as a strike up and away. In the Eastern League, in walks, Vito is fourth with 52. Now, the person who's in second, Josh Ockamy with 56, is no longer obviously in the Eastern League since he's in AAA as this is fouled up the first baseline and now the count is full. But Freesha has... 52 walks on the season, and Andre Lipsius, the Erie Seawolf, has 57 to lead in that category. But Frisha, even his OBP, really impressive, putting him sixth in the league on base percentage. And there's strike three. Got ahead in the count, but Bergner comes out on top in this battle, and there is out number two. In the top of the second, here's Kevin Vicuña fighting Phils. One run on one hit. Erie, no runs on one hit. They have taken a walk, but that is about it. First pitch to Kevin. Ball one. Kevin is... Really bringing up his batting average each and every game to 254 now. It's been about a month on the injured list. It's a 1-0. He's clipped back 1-1. One and one. He's become a nice hitter for average in our lineup. Uses all parts of the field. Gets himself on base real well. Good, good free agency pick up there. Two outs here, top second. The Arfills have a one nothing lead. Bergner faces home. Now he comes around, right foot on the rubber. Kevin, ground ball, sharp to third. Lipsius makes a good backhanded play on his knee. And the fighting Phils go down in order here. On to the bottom of the second. Colton Eastman will come now with a 1-0 lead. The Reading Fight and Fills are proud to partner with the Berks County Mental Health and Developmental Disabilities Program. Together, we are striking out the stigma in order to raise community awareness about mental illness and the prevention of suicide. With three simple words, are you okay? The hope is to begin a conversation to show Berks County that we care. Suicide affects and hurts everyone, but help is here and we'll work together to help raise awareness about suicide and identify what we can do as a community to prevent it people in need of assistance and support should call Crisis Intervention at 610-236-0530. That's 610-236-0530. Burke's Immunization Coalition works to provide leadership and education in promoting age-appropriate immunization across the lifespan for all residents of Burke's County. This is a coalition comprised of local physicians, nurse practitioners, school nurses, immunization coordinators, immunization advocates, and pharmaceutical representatives working to encourage continuity of immunization through medical resources. They focus on educating both the community and the providers. For more information, please visit www.immunizeba.org. Click Local Coalitions. Heading into the bottom of the second at UPMC Park, the fight and fills a one to nothing lead over the Erie Seawolves. Thanks to Johan Rojas' solo shot to start off this game. Colton Eastman comes out with 19 pitches under his belt. A lot of walk in the first, but no hits. So he's kept Erie quiet. 
And now we'll see what he can do against Andrew Navagato, Dylan Dingler, and Michael De La Cruz. Navagato out in left field today, batting 301 for Erie. Drives this deep at shore. Here's Graffinino across to first. A good play. Nino's first time at shortstop here for the R-Fills since they've got Jonathan Guzman there almost every day, but Guzzi getting the night off today. This is game number 95 of the season, and Jonathan has played 88 games. That's pretty impressive for a young guy, you know, 22 years old here, and he is the best defensive shortstop in the league. You can look that up. Based on fielding percentage, he's first, but based on, you know, total chances, errors, other things you can look at, turning double plays, making assists, things like that, he is the best shortstop in double A. Better than Anthony Volpe. Shocker, I know. That kid is uh, touted for everything. But tonight, A.J. Graffinino over there, and he looks good, making a really good play here to get out number one in the bottom of the second. Here's Dylan Dingler with two balls and no strikes. This is a bullet down into left. Bounces all the way up and off the wall above that 37-foot yellow line. And Dingler's home run will tie us up at one. Eleventh home run for the number two prospect for the Tigers this season, second of the series. And just like that, the game is tied. Here's Michael De La Cruz. He's had a bomb of his own in the series and is the designated hitter in today's contest. He'll be on, on the left side here against Colton. The 0-1. Framed well by Vito. They don't get the call outside. Now we're tied. One run and one hit for each team, and it's solo shots deep to left. Checking a swing but going around was De La Cruz. And the count moves to one and two. On this day in history, Ryan Howard was promoted to AAA July 30th, 2004. And Ryan Howard is, is one of those names that people look to the reason why double A is this hits the outside corner Eastman is punched out gets uh, the punch out for Michael De La Cruz there's out number two he's the reason or one of the reasons I should say why people look at double A as such a big make or break year that really accelerated guys like Ryan Howard guys like Carlos Ruiz um, obviously you know Howard hit so many home runs when he was with the fight and fills and that really, you know, gave him the confidence and uh, showcased his skills and got him up to the big leagues quick. And, of course, you know the story from there. Gage Workman singles up the middle here to continue this inning. Erie gets the go-ahead run on first with two outs. Here's the number nine hitter, Luis Carpio. Two outs for Colton Eastman. Tie ball game now at one apiece in the bottom of the second. Eastman fires over to first, diving back as Workman. He's had nine stolen, 19 stolen bases this season. Has a little bit of trouble getting on the base path, but once he's there, very impressive. Runner going. The throw from Vito. Oh, it's good. They call him safe. That was 
the best throw that you could make there to the corner of the bag on the first base side. And Kevin Vicuña was there with his glove down in the dirt. That's exactly where the ball landed as Workman slid in. And they don't get the call. Runner on second for Carpio. He took a ball. Now he'll take a strike. Luis has batted in this number nine spot the entire series, but he is he's batted well. Two on or one on, two outs. Ball is up and away. Two and one. Eastman pitch number 32 coming in. Fighting Phil's looking to get some innings out of their starter today. I'm sure Erie is as well. Their starter yesterday was taken out earlier than expected with injury. Here's the 2-1. Vito fires to third. And Workman has now stolen two bags here to get himself 90 feet from home manufacturing some work here. Sure, that's why the uh, Tigers like him. With two outs on the board, the go-ahead run is on third here for Erie as we're tied up at one apiece. And Luis Carpio has a 3-1 count. There's a called strike and it's full. Infield, outfield, back deep. Two outs on the board in a tie ball game at one. Gage Workman on third. Time is called. Vito pops up. Wants to give a moment for his pitcher here. Eastman glove at the chest. Right foot on the first base side of the rubber. Here's the payoff pitch. Popped up left side. Tracking back, Riho Makes the catch on the infield dirt, and that will do it. Erie gets a run, and one very close on third to scoring, but they strand Workman there. Dylan Dinkler's solo shot makes it one apiece. On to the top of the third we go here in Erie, Pennsylvania. Roof Max of West Reading is a safe, easy, proven, and affordable alternative to a complicated and expensive asphalt roof replacement. Roof Max's revolutionary new technology uses natural, plant based bio oil to restore shingles flexibility and instantly add five years of life to a roof. And treatment is around 20% of the cost of a complete roof replacement. From homes to commercial complexes, Roof Max of West Reading can help. Visit GetRoofMax.com or call 610-717-3949 for more information. ROG Orthodontics is the proud official partner of the ROG Orthodontics Fight and Fills Kids Club. Join today at Fightins.com to get your free ROG Orthodontics Kids Club t-shirt and visit FantasticSmiles.com for more information on why ROG Orthodontics is voted number one in Berks and Monco. ROG Orthodontics and the Fight and Fills, two great hometown partners. Cornwall Manor is an active senior living community on the 190-acre wooded campus in Cornwall, Lebanon County. The community offers independence and opportunities for wellness and fitness, as well as educational and musical programs, and the peace of mind of having convenient health care on site. Cornwall Manor offers a range of residential choices from apartments to homes. Prospective residents are welcome to visit us for lunch and have a chance to learn more about the community. More information is available online at cornwallmanor.org. Cornwall Manor, celebrating over 70 years of senior living. A Dylan Dingler home run tied us up at one apiece. Johan Rojas had one for the Fightins to start off this ball game. And so we head tied at one apiece into the top of the third. Jack Conley, A.J. Grappanino, and Johan Rojas do up in this frame. Jack settles into the righty batter's box. 26 pitches here for Austin Bergner. 
Giving up just that leadoff hit, then has sat down six consecutive fighting Phil's batters. Jack takes the first pitch ball. And there's one below the knees. Good frame by Dingler, but a little evident that he moved it up into the zone. Pops this up. Dingler ripping his mask off. It's going to end up in the stands. Into the concourse. And a good catch is made by a fan down there. Jack, a very patient hitter as well. Looks to lay down the bunt, pulls back on a ball way upstairs. And it's three and one. Said he spent the offseason working on speed, working on speed, agility, and it certainly has paid off, especially with the time in the outfield that he's getting able to run down balls, work bunts for hits, lines this into center. Meadows on the run over and makes the catch. It was well struck, but it just hung hang up in the air a little bit there for out number one. It's funny how... If you hit it too hard like that, like it's hit so well, it goes too far. Whereas if there's a little bit less on it, it can find that space between the infield and the outfield. Here's A.J. Graffanino from the left side. He takes the first pitch ball up and away. One out here in the top of the third. We're tied up at one apiece. Lipsy is playing in with a lefty bat. A little bit of a shift for Gage Workman. Shaded more towards second. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Poke down the third baseline foul. One and two. Bergner kicks and fires. This hits. Inside, a called strike three, and there is out number two here in the third. Bergner averaging a strikeout an inning here at this rate. Bergner turning into a full-time starter last year in a high A. Time is called, and it's not granted to Johan Rojas, who had his hand called timeout. He was holding it up, but they don't give it to him, and now he's arguing with Evan Johnson. He really did have his hand up there. Maybe he wasn't enough vocal enough about it. Sean's going to come in here. They're still talking. Now he's going to stay back. Rojas is stepping back in the batter's box. He took a called strike on that pitch. Chase is heftily there, strike two. Misses below the knees. Two outs, top three. One run apiece for each of these teams. Solo shot by Rojas himself and Dylan Dingler of the Seawolves. Here's the one-two. Chopped foul. Here he's got a decent crowd here. A couple of season ticket holders in front of me were asking... If we draw more fans than this, as Rojas goes down swinging, that will do it. Here in the third, I said, sir, we have way more fans than this. On to the bottom half of this frame, the Fightin' Phils are tied with the Erie Seawolves 1-1. When the Ready Fightin' Phils get hungry, we turn to our team feed partners. Special thanks to Wild Missing Family Restaurant and Bakery, Squawk Cafe, Collegeville Italian Bakery, Pizzeria, Jimmy G's Railroad House, Mimo's Italian Restaurant, and Pizzeria 
Jersey Mike subs, clingers on Corsonia, and Subway for making sure the Fight and Fills front office is never hungry on game day. Our staff enjoys delicious meals from our team feed partners, but don't take our word for it. Find out for yourself today. The Redding Fight and Fills birthday party package is the best way to celebrate a birthday. Whether you are a youngster or an adult, there is no better birthday than a Fightin's birthday. The Fightin's Fan Birthday Package is customizable for fans of any age and starts at just $120. Base packages include 10 general admission tickets to a Fightin's home game, an autographed baseball, and a VIP reserved parking spot. Fans can also add a wide variety of experiences and options to make sure your favorite Fightin's Fan's birthday is a grand slam. To enjoy a perfectly crafted 1893 from the makers of Pepsi Cola, you must first appreciate its carefully selected ingredients. A dash of cola nut extract, a hint of real sugar, a splash of sparkling water, and a generous amount of attractive spokesperson. Trust me, I'm gorgeous. <sighs> Cheers to 1893 boldly blended colas, a delicious balancing act of premium ingredients from the makers of Pepsi Cola. Into the bottom of the third we go, one run apiece as Colton Eastman heads on to the rubber. He'll see the top of the order in Daniel Cabrera, Andre Lipsius, and Parker Meadows. See if we can get a quick inning with 35 pitches here. He sends a first pitch strike to Cabrera. He lined out his first time up. Now he goes down and away, 0-2. Oh Colton features fastball, curveball, and changeup for the fighting Phils. Takes a big deep breath. You can see his shoulders go up and down. Here's the 0-2. Oh Breaks down and away again, and he gets Cabrera on three straight pitches. There's one in the third. Here's Andre Lipsius, walked in his last at-bat. Eastman's longest outing of the season was seven innings. And pitch count-wise, he's thrown into the 90s twice. There's a first pitch strike to the righty batter, Lipsius. This is too far outside. One and one. Those shadows starting to come into center field now. Jack Conley is immersed in them. And Johan Rojas is almost there. It's coming, it's creeping towards the plate as well, but everybody else is going to have to withstand the sun for a while longer as Lipsius takes a ball outside. Two and one. No outfield seating here in Erie. They've got that big arena where the minor league hockey team plays out and left batter's eye dead to center and the video board in right center this is sent deep to center field Rojas back plays it off the wall sends it in quick but it's a stand-up double for Andre Lipsius here third hit of the game for Erie and they'll have a runner on with one out for Parker Meadows Regular seating bowl that extends all the way from the right to left field lines. It's two levels. I'm at the top of level two. The concourse is between, it's the concourse is right underneath the second level, and then the first level goes straight down to the field. There's a big Bud Light party deck down the right field line. A lot of picnic seating and uh, a group area down the left field line as well. Some suites here at UPMC Park. It's a shot to left. Conley is going to have to play it off the wall. And actually able to make the catch right in front of the track. That is a huge out pickup for the fight in Phils. Just reached into the sty and snagged it out of the air. 
And that's two outs here. Lipsius forced to stay on second. Here's Dane Myers. And that's the thing about Jack got that ball in so quickly that Lipsius couldn't move. Myers takes a first pitch strike. He grounded out his first time up. Smacks that foul a little bit frustrated. I think he that was the pitch he wanted. Kisses the barrel of his bat there. Two outs. Lipsius on second. Myers up at the plate with an 0-2 count. Fight and Phils are eerie, are tied at one apiece. Here's the pitch. Chopped back to Eastman. Plays it comfortably, sends it to first, and that will do it. Fight and Phil set down the side, stranding Lipsius on second and keeping this a 1-1 game. To the fourth we go here in Erie, Pennsylvania. Cornwall Manor is an active senior living community on the 190-acre wooded campus in Cornwall, Lebanon County. The community offers independence and opportunities for wellness and fitness, as well as educational and musical programs, and the peace of mind of having convenient health care on site. Cornwall Manor offers a range of residential choices from apartments to homes. Prospective residents are welcome to visit us for lunch and have a chance to learn more about the community. More information is available online at cornwallmanor.org. Cornwall Manor, celebrating over 70 years of senior living. The time has come for businesses to grow, to prosper, to innovate, to succeed. Tompkins Vist Bank continues to be a leading lender to companies in southeastern Pennsylvania. We make decisions locally and invest locally so local businesses can thrive. Call a business advisor today and see how we can help your business grow. Tompkins Vist Bank, locally focused, a world of possibilities. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. To the fourth we go here in Erie. Fighting Phils and the Seawolves tied at one apiece. A leadoff home run from Johan Rojas and a solo shot from Dylan Dingler is what's got the runs on the boards on either side. Other than that, though, the Fightings haven't had a hit. And so they'll look to take the lead here in the fourth. Wendell Rijo, Simone Muziati, and Jalen Ortiz do up. Fighting Phils went down in order the past two frames. Actually, after that leadoff home run, Bergner has retired nine straight. Wendell takes a first pitch strike. This hits the outside corner, 0 oh, and 2. Wendell getting the start at third base today. See him there and at second. And rung up on three straight pitches. As Meadows hits the outside corner, that's his third straight strikeout. And out number one here to start off the fourth, Simone Muziati. Simone's had two solo shots in this series. Nice to see him get rolling. He's actually really solid on base streak. Nine consecutive games as he takes a hefty swinging strike as Bergner goes off speed down to 81. 
has been hovering above that Mendoza line all season as he smacks this into left center. Navigato back at the track, comes over and makes the catch. There's out number two. Here's Jalen Ortiz, the DH today. Struck out swinging his first time up. Big Phillies trade today as they sent Jojo Romero over to the St. Louis Cardinals in exchange for shortstop Edmundo Souza. Big glove first guy, hoping he'll make a difference in the middle infielder. Ortiz takes a strike and then sends his foul into the street outside of the ballpark. And he's down 0 and 2. Two outs here, top of the fourth. The fight and fills one. The Erie Seawolves won. And Jalen shoots this down the left field line foul. Oh, man, that had a lot of heat on it. Just got to come over a little bit. Here's the 0-2. And he goes down swinging. Another one, two, three frame from Austin Bergner as he sits down. The fight and fills in order onto the bottom of the fourth we go. We'll see if Colton Eastman can do the same in just one moment. White Star Tours and Travel Centers offers the R Phils fan road trip again this season. It's your chance to hit the road with other R Phils fans, see an R Phils road game, meet with an R Phils player, and see two Philadelphia Phillies road games. The White Star R Phils Fan Road Trip visits Erie and Pittsburgh, Thursday, July 28th through Sunday, July 31st. You see the R Phils at Erie, meet with an R Phils player or coach, then head to Pittsburgh for a tour of the city, including the Incline, and a ride on the Yankee Clever Riverboat. You will attend two Phillies game versus the Pirates on Friday and Saturday before traveling home Sunday with a stop at the Flight 93 National Memorial. Visit the customer service booth for more info on the White Star R Phil's fan road trip to Erie and Pittsburgh. Space is very limited. Sign up today. Nursing home neglect is a serious problem. If you or a loved one has suffered from bed sores obtained in a nursing home or a fall down in a nursing home resulting in a fracture, our friends at Swartz Culleton can help. Call the attorneys at Swartz Culleton for a free consultation. Their phone number is 1 800 Justice. That's 1 800 587 8423. Once again, call 1 800 Justice today. Swartz Culleton is a proud sponsor of the Reading Fight and Fills. Into the bottom of the fourth inning, the Fight and Fills have now been sat down in order four straight times after a leadoff home run from Johan Rojas. Austin Bergner has sat down 12 straight. So Colton Eastman looks to do the same and keep this ball game tied at one in the bottom of the fourth. Andrew Navigato, Dylan Dingler, and Michael De La Cruz all do up in this frame. Eastman allowing just one run on three hits. Pitch number 47 is a called strike to start off this inning. Riho playing in at third. Corridor playing in a little bit as well at first, but those middle infielders back on that grass edge as Eastman sends us outside. One and one. This hits the strike zone, goes off speed down to 78 with that change up, and he gets him one and two. Eastman, a fourth-round pick in 2018 out of Cal State Fullerton, went to the uh, College World Series with them. That's pretty cool. It was 20-7 and seven when he was there with a 2-2-9 ERA. That is super impressive. Here's the 2-2 two -two to Navigato. This is chopped to third. Backhanded Guzman fire, or excuse me, Graffanino fires to first. So typical for me to make that call. 
But it's and it's uh, Graffinino who's over there, and he makes the play for out number one here. This looks good at short. Both of those outs have been very, very deep back there, and he has not hesitated at all. So Colton Eastman originally drafted by the Twins in the 20th round and then chose to go to college, and that's why a lot of guys do that. You improved your draft pick status. He went from the 20th round to the 4th round. That's more money in the 4th round. But some guys are just ready to go right after high school, like Logan O'Hoppy, late draft pick. Just kind of depends on where you are at your career. Griff Bagheri chose to go. Some people just want to go to school. That's why Mark Appel went. Waited all four years at Stanford. Wanted to finish out his degree. And now in the majors. Was called back up today with Kyle Gibson placed in the bereavement list. Three balls and no strikes here to Dylan Dingler, who had a solo shot his last time up. Eastman kicks and fires. This hits. Three and one. And there's ball four. And that will walk a batter here on. Dingler reaches first with one out. Here is Michael De La Cruz. Johan Rojas let off this game with a solo shot. Dylan Dingler had one of his own back in the second. We are tied at one here in the bottom of the fourth. Sent foul. And there's strike one. Change up sitting about 86, 87 for Colton Eastman. That fastball, low 90s, and the curve down in the low 80s today. Shuffling off the back at first is Dingler. No stolen bases for the catcher this season. This is sent slowly to second. Vicuña can't get it in his glove, but he's able to make the out at first. Missed it in his glove, barehanded it over to first. He stayed connected in the play. He kept his eye on the baseball. And even though he wasn't able to turn two, they do get the out at first for number two. I think it was too slow even to try to get the double play. I think even if he had picked that up cleanly, he would have just went to first anyways. But Dylan Dingler does move into scoring position now with two outs. Here is Gage Workman. Workman had a single and two stolen bases his last time up. Got himself all the way to third, but couldn't come home. First pitch misses down and away. Ball one. Tied at one apiece here, bottom of the fourth. Erie has that go-ahead run out on second. Colton has the ball in his glove, leaning over, his right arm dangling. Now he comes set in the chest. Tan glove. Misses outside, 2-0. This, oh. this, is this is a guy that swings, 141 strikeouts, 63 hits. He's in the left side. Eastman looks back at second. Here's the 2-0. -oh. And this gets in the hole on the right side. Ortiz making the throw. Muziotti making the throw from the outfield. And it's no good. A run scores. Erie takes a 2-1 lead. Man, the defensive position's tripping me up a little bit today. Gage Workman, two hits today as he drives in Dylan Dingler from second, who was taking off with two outs. And now Erie leads 2-1. to one. Here's Luis Carpio. Carpio, the number nine hitter, steps in on the right side. He popped up to third his first time up. 
as he takes a ball. Fight and fills one run on one hit. Erie two runs on four hits. Mostly clean defense in the field today. No errors. This is up high two and up. Eastman looks back at the runner on first, and Gage Workman obviously has already stolen two bags today. Sends it over to first, Corridor gets a good tag on him. He wanted that call, but they don't get it. That's step off number one for Colton here in this at bat. 2 0 count to Louise Carpio with two outs. This one hits the strike zone. Two and one. Erie now leading with Workman's RBI single to score Dingler. Just a one run game. Runner going. Freesha the throw down. It's a great throw. The tag by Kevin is late. Those have been two really solid attempts from Vito Frisia back behind the plate today. And they just can't get Gage Workman out. Third stolen base of the game for him. And he gets himself into scoring position with two away. And the pitch was a ball to Carpio, so it's three and one. Eastman deals. This hits the inside corner. Here's the payoff pitch with two outs. Popped up. In foul territory, Freesha tries to make the catch, and he can't. Carpio's going to get another shot. It was just in an awkward spot up the third baseline, right between where Freesha was and Riho playing back deep. And nobody could get to it in time. Two outs, runner on second. Erie leads two to one here in the bottom of the fourth. Here's the payoff pitch from Colton once more. Gets Carpio down swinging. And that will do it here in the bottom of the fourth inning. But Erie does play the go-ahead run. And they lead by one. The fight and fills turn to bat top five coming up in just a moment. Nursing home neglect is a serious problem. If you or a loved one has suffered from bed sores obtained in a nursing home or a fall down in a nursing home resulting in a fracture, our friends at Swartz Peloton can help. Call the attorneys at Swartz Peloton for a free consultation. Their phone number is 1-800-JUSTICE. That's 1-800-587-8423. Once again, call 1-800-JUSTICE today. Swartz Peloton is a proud sponsor of the Reading Fight and Fills. The Reading Fight and Fills are proud to partner with Humane Pennsylvania throughout the 2022 season. Humane Pennsylvania is the region's premier leader in animal welfare and empowers the people in our communities to increase their capacity to care for animals so that all animals are healthy, safe, and treated humanely. Humane Pennsylvania is proud to be a Fiesta Friday and Bark in the Park sponsor. Learn more about Humane Pennsylvania and how you can help build the best community for animals anywhere by visiting humanepa.org. This is the crazy hot dog vendor coming to you from the radio booth. When I need to get somewhere in a hurry and the ostrich isn't cutting it, I hop on my Harley Davidson from classic Harley Davidson. It's your one-stop shop for all your Harley needs. They have everything you need from boots, jackets, t-shirts, gloves, mugs, and oh yeah, they have a great selection of bikes too, which are almost as good on gas as an ostrich. Go to classic Harley Davidson for everything Harley Davidson, and I'll see you at Harley night.
and then getting a surcharge. So we're working to just some just fair, common prices every day. Top of the fifth here in Erie, Pennsylvania, the Seawolves have taken a two to one lead over the Fighting Phils. Gage Workman batted in Dylan Dinkler for the lead. And now everybody that comes up for Reading, of course, will represent the tying run here on the top of the fifth. Aldrin Corridor, Vito Frisha, and Kevin Vacuna do up. Austin Bergner has been very efficient. Here's pitch number 50. It is a called strike to Aldrin Corridor to start off the top of the fifth. He allowed that leadoff home run to Johan Rojas, but he has sat down the next 12 batters that he has seen as this is a blooper into right center and Corridor gets himself a hit. Wow. Look at that. That was a broadcaster's jinx. Batter number 13 gets on base. And the tying run now is on first for the fight and fills with Vito Frisha up. Takes a call strike, struck out swinging his first time up. That was just the fight and Phil's second hit of the game. Down by one here, top of the fifth. Aldrum shuffles off the bag at first, not quite a threat to steal. This is sent sharply foul, down 0 and 2. Phillies just beginning their start against the Pittsburgh Pirates out at PNC Park. Ranger Suarez on the rubber. Lehigh Valley leads Durham three to nothing. Gene Segura rehabbing has an RBI single. Freesha golfs this right into the glove of Carpio and Corridor is doubled up at first. A heck of a play by Carpio deep in the hole at second. Had to jump up and snag that out of the sky, absolutely robbing Vito. How don't those balls fall for the fight and fills is beyond me. I mean, that was a well-hit baseball, and it ends up in a double play. Here's Kevin Vicuña now with two out and nobody on. Kevin grounded out to the third baseman his first time up, takes a ball and a swinging strike. Kent Emanuel coming off the injured list, making the start for the Iron Pigs today. Andrew Painter's start for Jersey Shore as Kevin takes a called strike one and two. Jersey Shore leads one nothing. Jared Carr, an RBI single. Painter has thrown two innings of work, two hits, one walk, one strikeout. So we'll keep an eye on the Phillies' number one prospect. Mark, Mick Abel had a really nice start yesterday. Kevin slices this foul. He'll go again. Clearwater trails Dunedin by two. They are in the top of the third. Gene Cabrera out on the mound. Cabrera was the guy alongside Bryson Stott who won the uh, Paul Owens Award last year, best pitcher in the system. Here's the one two, sent foul. He was an interesting choice, though. Fight and Phil's trail, Erie two to one. Kevin Vicuña up at the plate. Here's the one two pitch. Another foul ball, Kevin working here against Austin Bergner. That was six pitches. It makes Bergner reaches number 60. That is in the dirt over the plate. Two and two.
This is fouled off the bat on a late swing by Kevin. And he stays alive. Kicking the dirt, Austin Bergner facing home plate. Right foot back on the rubber. Now he turns his body to the side. A full wind up. Slice down the right field line into the party deck foul. Kevin made good contact there. Right field line is 328 down. They had the distance, just not the angle. Two outs on the board, top of the fifth. The Fighting Phils trail by one. Had a leadoff runner, but a double play ball tied him up. Here's a 2 2. Down the third baseline, foul, good play by Sean Williams. That was number 10 here to Kevin. Who's going to come out on top in this battle? 2-2. Two -two. Lined into left. That's going to drop in, bouncing all the way to the wall. Kevin's hustling for two. He is on a mission. The helmet coming off. A stand-up double for Kevin Vicuña with two outs. Gets himself into scoring position. And he beats Austin Bergner on the 11th pitch of the at-bat. Really impressive work there by Kevin Vicuña to stay focused. You're getting tired out there taking those hacks, and he's still able to drive the ball into left field. Here's Jack Conley with the chance to tie things up. There are two outs on the board, and the Arfils trail by just one. Vicuña shuffles off the bag at second. Jack checks his swing, but it's a ball below the knees. Out of the stretch here is Bergner misses inside two and oh. Kevin's got a really nice lead out there. Nobody keeping him on. Carpio shaded back behind the bag, but Bergner doesn't seem too concerned with him. Gives him a little side eye there. Here's the 2 0. -oh. Fouled off the bat of Jack Conley, smoked. Into the Arfils dugout. Nick Briggs, the athletic training assistant, has to get out of the way. Conley puts the bat on his shoulder. Two balls and a strike. This hits at the knees. Two and two. Vicuña doubled. To get to second, out in scoring position as the Arfils trail by one. Conley tied up and foul tips it right into the glove of Dylan Dingler. The fight and Phils have two hits, but they don't score a run. As we head into the bottom of the fifth, they trail by one here at UPMC Park. The award-winning Reading Hospital Tower Health Character Pool Party provides an unforgettable night out with your family and friends. Enjoy a baseball game while swimming in the 87-degree heated pool directly behind the right field home run wall. Plus, two and a half hours of all-you-can-eat buffet and photos and autographs with the crazy hot dog vendor and the Fight and Phil's mascot band. Regular season tickets are $31 per person for groups of 20 or more. Give us a call today at 610-370-BALL. For top flight local jobs, go with who you know. J.P. Mascaro & Sons, a leading waste removal company. To meet today's employment and service demands brought on by the pandemic, Mascaro is upgrading its already highly competitive employee wage and benefit package for drivers, collection crew helpers, and other positions. Call 888-MASCARO, M-A-S-C-A-R-O, for details. Work for an established local family business committed to its employees. Again, call 888-MASCARO today or apply online at www.jpmascaro.com. 
Highline Merchandising, formerly Textiles, is your local small business company that provides screen printing, design, and merchandising services for local, national, and international businesses, bands, shows, and festivals, including seven-time Emmy Award-winning show Schitt's Creek and Unsolved Mysteries. Visit our website at HighlineMerchandising.com. Fighting Phils get two hits in the top of the fifth, but they can't drive a run in, so they trail two to one as we enter the bottom of the fifth inning. Top of the order here for Colton Eastman. He'll see Daniel Cabrera, Andre Lipsius, and Parker Meadows. Sixty-eight pitches here for Eastman. It should be able to take us into the 90s. Looking for his first 1-2-3 frame. As he sends a first pitch strike to Daniel Cabrera, who's 0 for 2 today. The thing that makes Erie so good, as this is a slow roller up the first baseline, somebody's got to get to first, and it's Colton Eastman. Picks up the ball on his sprint over and steps on the bag. That's one of those plays where communication is so important. Is Corridor coming in for it and you're covering? Are you making it unassisted? Are you flipping it to the first baseman? That's where being vocal is super important. And they get out number one here quickly to start off the fifth. Here's Andre Lipsius. Lipsius has been on twice today, a walk and a double. First pitch bounces over the plate. The Phillies threatening the Pirates. They have the bases loaded and Nick Castellanos up with one out on the board. They're tied at zero in the top of the first out at PNC Park. Lehigh Valley leads 3-0. They knocked out the starter for Durham in the top of the third. Eastman hits the outside corner with the fastball 89 miles an hour, and it's 1-1. One and one. Another home run by Carlos De La Cruz, his 10th of the season. Jersey Shore leads Wilmington 2-0. Andrew Painter, three innings of work, just three hits, one walk, one strikeout. Ground ball, foul. Puts Lipsius down one and two. And Clearwater still trailing Dunedin by two there in the bottom of the third at home at Baycare Ballpark. Good stuff from the org today. Hoping we can get in on it. Erie, two runs on four hits. Redding, one run on three hits. Both teams using home runs here for their first run of the game. The one-two. A late swing by Lipsius gets a tiny, tiny piece of it to stay alive. Fans, thanks so much for tuning in on the road here. Fighting Phils have one more game in Erie after today. Tomorrow, a 1-0-5 start at the ballpark. It'll be the Tuesday starters in Ethan Lindau and Reese Olson. The one two checks his swing, but he doesn't go around. Two balls and two strikes. Then we'll be betting, heading back home for a series against the Hartford Yard Goats, the Colorado Rockies affiliate. Looking forward to having them at First Energy Stadium for the first time this season. As Eastman kicks and fires above the head, the count is full. You've, you're going to hear this first. You guys are the first to get this news. So Hartford dresses at the steamed cheeseburgers a couple times a summer. That's like a big diner thing down there they have. I don't know. And, of course, Redding dresses as the hot dogs every Sunday. So Hartford's going to bring their jerseys, and we're going to do a cheeseburgers versus hot dogs day on Sunday. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. The jerseys are super cool. Here's the payoff pitch outside, ball four. And Eastman will walk Lipsius for the second time today. Seawolves get a runner on with one out. Here's Parker Meadows. Now 
Meadows 0 for 2 today. It's been the bottom of the lineup doing the work for Erie so far. Pitch inside, misses ball one. Eastman will try to keep Lipsius at first here for a double play ball in tune. This is grounded sharply deep at short. Graffinino stops the ball, but he can't find it. Keeps it from going into the outfield. Can't come up with it in his glove. That should go in as a hit. I think it's impressive that he even stopped it. And so Meadows gets himself on first. Lipsy is to second, two on, and one out here for Dane Myers. And they are going to give Redding an error for that. So actually E6 allows Meadows to reach. What's crazy is that if you don't touch that ball, if that ball just gets past him into the outfield and he doesn't make a diving play, he doesn't get the error for it, and the same result happens. But because he was able to dive and stop it but couldn't come up with the ball, he'll get an error for it. Eastman fires back to second, almost rips that into the outfield. Vicuña puts a glove on it, but no dice. Myers up with two on here. Had that big home run yesterday. 0 for 2 today. Erie threatening. Bottom of the fifth, they lead 2 to 1. Colton comes set out of the stretch. 0 1 misses downstairs. Uh, 1 and 1. Vitenfields have dropped seven in a row, the longest consecutive losing streak this season. They had six losses in a row earlier in April. This is grounded to short. Graffinino to Vicuña, on to first, and they turn two. Big double play ball for the fight and fills to get them out of the inning. Stranding an eerie runner on the base pass. Colton Eastman puts a zero up on the board. The fight and fills trail by one, but it's their turn to bat. Top six coming up in just a moment. There you are in the great wide open when you hear it. Dinner time. When you're hungry, you're not going to let 5,000 feet of mountain get in your way. And if they try, that's what Kia's lineup of exceptionally capable SUVs with available all-wheel drive is for. The Telluride, Sorento, Sportage, and Seltos are how you know we take this pretty seriously. The SUVs and the dinner. Hurry into your local Kia dealer today. Kia, movement that inspires. Visit Kia.com for details. Always drive safely. Beezer's Incorporated, a family-owned, full-line food service distributor located in central Pennsylvania. Services restaurants, sporting facilities, theme amusement parks, health care facilities, educational facilities, and other institutions throughout Pennsylvania and the Mid-Atlantic region. For over 100 years, Beezer's and its employees have committed themselves to making customer service their highest priority. Beezer's works hard to provide customers with the products they require, delivered by their helpful fleet drivers. Beezer's is large enough to serve and small enough to care. For more information, Call 800-326-2828 or Feasers.com. The Reading Fight and Fills are proud to partner with the Berks County Mental Health and Developmental Disabilities Program. Together, we are striking out the stigma in order to raise community awareness about mental illness and the prevention of suicide. With three simple words, are you okay? The hope is to begin a conversation to show Berks County that we care. Suicide affects and hurts everyone. But help is here, and we'll work together to help raise awareness about suicide and identify what we can do as a community to prevent it. People in need of assistance and support should call Crisis Intervention at 610-236-0530. That's 610-236-0530. Right. 
AJ Graffinino, Johan Rojas, and Wendell Rijo do up as the starter Austin Bergner exits after five innings of work. The fight and fills will see Joe Navalon here in the top of the six, down two to one to the Erie Seawolves. Graffinino started a huge double play ball to get them out of the fifth clean. Looking to take that momentum here into the top half with a new pitcher. Slices is up the first base side foul. Down one and two. Bergner, five innings of work, three hits, one run. That was the solo shot to Johan Rojas that started things off. No walks and seven strikeouts. There is somebody up in the bullpen for Redding. As Graffinino sends this into shallow left field, nobody can come up with it. Hustling for two is Graffinino. That was in no man's land and little to no communication between Erie as the left fielder and Andre Lipsius bump into each other. And they seem okay out there. They get back up trying to walk it off. And a leadoff double for A.J. Graffinino puts him in a really good spot here with nobody out. And back to the top of the order here is Johan Rojas. Rojas, one for two today, a home run and a strikeout. Pretty opposite ends of the spectrum. Lays down the bunt up the first base side. It's foul. I like the idea there, trying to shift... Nino to third, and of course, Rojas, the kind of guy that could easily run that out. Redding has used the bunt quite a bit this season, whether it's, you know, a sacrifice situation or whether it's trying to bunt for a single, which we've seen one through nine do that. I mean, even Aldrip Corridor has a bunt single this season. Bat on his shoulder for Rojas. We'll see what he does with a runner on second and nobody out. Looks to lay down the bunt. Takes a pitch way inside. One on one. Leaning over Navalon, bending at the hip. Now he comes set, finding his grip in his glove. Looks back at second. Rojas lays down the bunt back to the pitcher, drawing the throw to first. Carpio covering. They say he keeps his foot on the bag. The sacrifice bunt for Jonathan Guzman moves A.J. Graffinino within 90 feet of scoring. The fight and down by just one run, so he represents the tying run over there on third. And here's Wendell Riho with a big opportunity. Riho 0 for 2 today. Trying to turn it around here as he takes a called strike. The infield playing way in. Graffinino a very good runner as well. This miss outside, one and one. Dingler, the catcher, we haven't seen much that gets past him. Our fills could use a wild pitch right now. Out of the stretch here for Navalon, the 1-1. One, one. Rio takes this deep to center field, track, wall. And it's caught. Graffinino racing home on the sacrifice fly. And Rijo ties up this game. I can't believe that hung up in the sky like that. Wind pushing in about eight miles an hour was all it took. I couldn't have been more than a foot away from that wall. But he ties it up into a piece. Back-to-back -back sacrifice plays by the fight and fills manufacturing a run. As Graffinino scores, it's two apiece. With two outs, here's Simone Muziati. Muzi punches this down the left field line. It drops foul. I got a tough time seeing that from my angle. Have to lean out of the booth.
But on a strike to Muziati, he's 0 for 2 today. Both balls the opposite way. Up in the air, outs to left. This is sent deep in the hole on the left side. Putting a glove on it is Andre Lipsius, and he makes the play over to first. But the fighting Phils tie up this game. Raffanino leads off the inning with a double. Sack bunt pushes him to second, and a sack or a sack bunt pushes him to third, and a sacrifice fly brings him home. And now we're tied up to a piece onto the bottom of the sixth. We'll turn to the bullpen here in Erie. Join us as we celebrate Redding's Hispanic and Latino culture during 12 Friday home games this season. With Savage 61 Fiesta Fridays presented by EXP Realty, Breakthrough Beverage, Humane Pennsylvania, Origlio Beverage, and Mal Beer. Fiesta Fridays feature special Los Luchador de Redding uniforms, Hispanic and Latino food and music, and other cultural elements throughout the ballpark. Get your tickets now by calling 610-370-BALL or visiting us at the Widenhammer Ticket Office at First Energy Stadium. ROG Orthodontics is the proud official partner of the ROG Orthodontics Fightin' Phil's Kids Club. Join today at fightins.com to get your free ROG Orthodontics Kids Club t-shirt and visit fantasticsmiles.com for more information on why ROG Orthodontics is voted number one in Berks and Monco. ROG Orthodontics and the Fightin' Phil's, two great hometown partners. Savage Auto Group is a proud sponsor of Fiesta Fridays. Enjoy an R. Phil's game, great food, music, and entertainment. The team will play in their Los Luchadores de Redding Latino tribute uniforms. Visit Timmy Profit and Savage Auto Group, Pennsylvania's most awarded dealership for all your automotive needs. Pitching change here for the Reading Fight and Phils as Colton Eastman hands the ball over to McKinley Moore here for the bottom of the sixth inning in what is now a tied a ball game. Reading did a fantastic job manufacturing a run there. AJ Graffanino led off with a double sack bunt, pushed him to third sack fly, brought him home. And here is Andrew Navagato, Dylan Dingler, and Michael De La Cruz in the bottom of the six, tied at two. McKinley Moore kicks and fires the first pitch, ball outside. Colton Eastman, five innings of work, five hits, two runs, both earned three walks, three strikeouts, 82 offerings. McKinley. Misses inside, two and oh. Pretty much throwing a fastball, a slider, and occasionally a changeup as he comes inside, three and oh. Fastball sitting right now, 95-ish, can get up to triple digits. Slider can be high 80s, even to 90. Righty on the first base side of the rubber. Here's the three up. This hits. Fight Phils get a run. They tie it up. Do not want to give it back immediately. It's kind of been how it's going the past few days. Here's a three one. Hits him. Navagato will get a free pass down to first on a hit by pitch. Visit from the trainer here, Chris Vick. Obviously, that had a lot of heat on it. He's taken a moment to himself. He did have that elbow guard on, which I think helped him out a little bit. I think he's going to stay in this game here. Just needs a minute. 
walk down to first. Frisch is going to take the opportunity to come and talk to McKinley Moore here. Runner on and nobody out here for Dylan Dingler, who's done all the damage today. A solo shot in the second and walked and scored a run in the fourth. Dingler crowding the plate here. Runner on first and nobody out here. Writing two runs on four hits. Erie two runs on five hits. Dingler chases a breaking ball. Strike one. Moore looks back at the runner on first. Glove at the waist. Here's the 0-1. Misses outside. The little sliver of sun that we talked about yesterday is, is back, extending from third to the mound to first. And just a tiny piece in right field as well. It's got to be a little obnoxious. Moore fires to first and overthrows Aldrim Corridor, and now the runner is going to get to second. That'll go in as E1. Breaks up the double play, gets the runner into scoring position. Upstairs, Dingler two and one. Dingler swinging the bat, puts it on his right shoulder. Runner on second, and nobody out here in the bottom of the six. Moore deals a wild pitch, gets past Frisha, and off to third is Navigado, and they are getting all kinds of free passes here. Phillies tied 0-0 against the Pirates. They're in the bottom of the second at PNC. Lehigh Valley's added another run, 4-0 lead. This is chopped to third. Wendell Riho holds on to it long enough to make the play to first. Corridor can't keep it in his glove. That sun is shining real bad at first. And safe is Dylan Dingler, and this is... Going to prompt a visit from the pitching coach, Matt Hockenberry, with two on and nobody out. Jersey Shore now leads five to nothing over Wilmington. Baron Radcliffe, three run shot. Andrew Painter, four innings, three hits, one walk, four strikeouts. That'll go in as the third error for the fight and fills today. That allows Dylan Dingler to reach. E3. Tire infield coming in here, trying to figure out a game plan with Michael De La Cruz up, the bottom of the lineup up. Actually, seven through nine, although Gage Workman has been on twice today. Still a chance to get out of this inning without any damage. We're going to have to work around runners on the corner and nobody out. And a lefty, Michael De La Cruz up, trying to keep this ball game tied at two. Hits the corner, 
0-1. Oh, 94 out of the hands of McKinley Moore there. Lights have come on here at the ballpark. Only sun in that exact spot. I feel like they didn't build this ballpark facing in the right direction. This is outside 101. Of course, Erie has to battle the same issues when they're out there defensively. Hefty swing and a miss on De La Cruz with that 96 mile an hour fastball, and he's got him one and two. Looking for out number one here in the sixth. It would be huge to get the punchy right now. Glove of the ways for more out of the stretch. Here's the one two. Ground ball up the middle. Kevin dives for it, but it gets through. Racing for third is Dingler. As Navigato comes across, Erie takes the lead back. Again, runners on the corners and nobody out for Gage Workman. He's two for two today. I think De La Cruz is going to take off for second since there's a runner on third. I don't think V's going to throw down. Really need an out here. Workman takes a called strike inside. Moore hits 97. Moore taking a beat. The 1-1 one, one, up and away. 2-1. and one. Dingler on third. Michael De La Cruz on first. He's come up big twice this series. It's only a one-run game. I mean, it's just a good game. I mean, despite the three errors by Redding. This hits the outside corner. Two-two. Moore kicks and fires. A 97-mile-an-hour fastball blazes right past Gage Workman. And there is out number one on the board here for McKinley Moore. Here's Luis Carpio. First pitch ball here to the number nine hitter who's 0 for 2 today. Runners on the corners with one out. This hits the outside corner, one and one. Set foul. Down one and two. Sent foul way out of the ballpark. The lights have come on here. Still that slice of sunlight cutting across the diamond, but everywhere else is in the shade. Probably have another hour before the sun sets. This is sent sharply foul down the first base side. 
He'll keep his count. Moore comes set, glove at the waist. Dingler on third, De La Cruz on first. One out here, bottom six. Misses inside, 2-2. Two -two. Cut on and miss. Back-to-back -back Ks for McKinley Moore. Puts out number two on the board here in the bottom of the six. And now we'll see the top of the order in Daniel Cabrera. Big back-to-back -back strikeouts here with runners on the corners. Already gave up one run, trying to limit the damage here as Erie leads three to two. Hits the outside corner. Strike one. Really hitting with the fastball a lot right now. Goes up to 98 there. And Cabrera just watches it come through the strike zone down 0-2. Outside, V gives him a point. That's what we're looking for. Just come in a little bit and get Cabrera, who's 0 for 3 today. Dingler on third, De La Cruz on first. He had an RBI single. That makes it 3 to 2 Erie. Moore comes home. This is popped up foul. Hits the roof. De La Cruz was going. He'll have to come back. Corridor using his left hand to shield the sun. Here's a one-two, bounced over the plate. Vito keeps it in front of him. De La Cruz takes second. And now there's two in scoring position with two outs. McKinley sets his right foot on the first base side of the rubber. Dingler on second, De La Cruz, or Dingler on third, De La Cruz on second. Two outs here, bottom six. Big leg kick, the 2-2. Poked off the bat into the hole on the left side. One run will score. The play at the plate, no good. Two runs score. Heading for third is Cabrera. He's caught. He goes back to second. Two run double makes it Erie five, Redding two. And now manager Sean Williams is gonna come out here. There's no one in the bullpen. Oh, there is someone warming in the bullpen. He's going to take the ball from McKinley Moore. We'll give it to, ooh, is that Adam Leverett? I think so. We'll take a break and allow somebody to warm up here. Stuck in the bottom of the sixth. Now we're down by three.
It's Adam Leverett who comes out to try to get Andre Lipsius, who shoves this into right field. Muziotti bouncing into the wall, makes the catch. And Lev on one pitch retires the side, but the damage is done by Erie. They end up scoring three runs on two hits and a fight and fills error. And they take a 5-2 to two lead as we head into the seventh. The fight and fills have some work to do. Gear up for fight and fill season. Visit the Brentwood Industries Fight and Fill team store at First Energy Stadium or check out our online store 24 hours a day, 7 days a week at rfills.com backslash shop. We have a wide variety of fight and fills, hats, t-shirts, kids apparel, and more. Looking for something new? Check out our latest selections of low Luchadores Doris Day Reading and Reading Hot Dogs gear. Call us Throwback Black R Train R Fills Attire. Root for your fightings in style. Stop by the Brentwood Industries Fightings Team Store or rfills.com slash shop. The sound of an ice cold Corona is music to my ears. Oh, run that back. Dope. Now drop that beat. And hit me with the hook, player. Hey, whatever you do with your fine life, just do you, player. Relax responsibly. Corona Extra Beer, imported by Crown Imports, Chicago, Illinois. The Fight and Fills know who to call for trash and recycling services. A proven winner, J.P. Mascaro & Sons. The industry leader for over 50 years. Trust the familiar Mascaro Blue Elephant to provide dependable, quality service for your home or business. That's J.P. Mascaro and Sons, one of the top companies in its industry. Trash and recycling services for home, business, and industry. We are hiring and have open positions in Berks County. Check our website for open positions at jpmascaro.com or call 1-888-MASCARA. J.P. Mascaro and Sons, ready to serve you. Jalen Ortiz to lead us off here. Joe Navalon back out after another inning of work. The fight and fills are down by three now. As Jalen sends one foul for strike one, they've got some work to do. Another foul back from the righty. He's had a pair of strikeouts in the game today. Still three innings of baseball left, plenty of time. To come back and then some. Try not to let this game slip away. Jalen holds off on a ball below the knees. Finally, that piece of sun, of course, when Erie is out on the field, is gone. Everything's in the shadows now behind the outfield wall as Jalen sends this foul into the stands. He'll keep his one two count. Ortiz swinging the bat on his shoulder. Strikes out for the third time today. And there's out number one on the board in the seventh. Here's Aldrum Corridor. This is outside. Ball one. Ahead of the pitch, showing two. Cordor chops this off the bat down the first phase line. It takes a weird hop off the back and right back to the pitcher. Navalon covering is able to make the catch. Cordor did not get a good jump out of the box. I don't know if he thought it was going to be foul or an easy out or what. But there's two. Got to give the assist to the first base back. 
Here's Vito Frisha. So for two today. Frisha shoves this into center. It's going to drop in for a base hit. A two out piece of hitting there. Puts Vito on first. Here's Kevin Vicuña. That was the fight in Phil's fifth hit of the game here. They have two runs, but three errors. Erie, five runs on seven hits. The Fightings have only made three errors one other time this season, and they ended up losing that game. This is sent down the third baseline foul. Kevin had a nice double back in the fifth. Was stranded out on the base pass. One for two today. Looking to keep the line moving. The art fills down by three here in the top of the seventh. Up an elevator shaft. The first baseman Myers takes one step to his left and makes the catch right at the tip of his glove. But he keeps it in there and that will do it. The fight and fills. Get a hit but they can't come across the board. They trail by three set stretch time here at the ballpark in Erie, Pennsylvania. The fight and fills know who to call for trash and recycling services. A proven winner, J.P. Mascaro & Sons, the industry leader for over 50 years. Trust the familiar Mascaro Blue Elephant to provide dependable, quality service for your home or business. That's J.P. Mascaro & Sons, one of the top companies in its industry. Trash and recycling services for home, business, and industry. We are hiring and have open positions in Berks County. Check our website for open positions at jpmascaro.com or call 1-888-MASCARA. J.P. Mascaro and Sons, ready to serve you. Berks Packing is a family-owned and operated meat processor located here in Reading, specializing in hot dogs, ham, specialty meats, and more. Berks Packing provides America's classic ballpark with quality products, including the highly acclaimed Flat Top Grilled Hot Dog. Join us for Burke's Packing Sunday Family Fun Days at Sunday Home Games all season long at First Energy Stadium. Lidl is a normal grocery store with aisles and shelves and high quality groceries. But only Lidl has really low prices. Like so low they're too good to be true. But true. Lidl. Suspiciously low price groceries. To the bottom of the seventh, Adam Leverett will come out for a fresh inning after getting out of the sixth with a fly ball to right field. Parker Meadows, Dane Myers, and Andrew Navagato do up here. Erie leads Redding 5-2. to two. Erie's got the Hollow Weekend jerseys on today. Black and neon green. And the Viking fills in their road grays. Weber looking to get out of this inning quick. Erie has not been sat down in order yet today. Outside. 1-1. One, one. Leverett working out of the stretch here, turning into a full-time reliever. This is outside two and one. Ninety-three mile an hour fastball hits the outside corner two and two. There's strike three. Lev picks up the big strikeout for out number one here in the seventh for Dane Myers. Dane Myers. 
Myers has been kept quiet today. Leverett comes inside on him. This is sent off the bat foul. Way out of the park, 1-1. One, one. Righty comes set, first base out of the rubber. This misses below the knees, two and one. Shall we check in on the big fills? Zero, zero, top four. Out in Pittsburgh. Here's a two one from Adam. Clips the batter and it'll go to first. A free pass issued to Dane Myers. Second hit batter by the Fightin' Phil's pitching staff. Puts a runner on. And one out here for Andrew Navagato. Lehigh Valley leads 4 0 over Durham there in the top of the sixth. Out in North Carolina, Lehigh Valley leads 5 to nothing. Andrew Painter still in this game. Just picked off a runner. Runner going. Freesha, the throw. It's good, but the ball gets away from Kevin, and Navagato is, excuse me, Myers is in safely. Breaks up the double play, puts a runner on second in scoring position here for Erie, who already leads by three. Painter, five and a third innings, four hits, no runs, one walk, five strikeouts, 73 offerings. It's pretty solid for the rookie. This is smoked foul into the stands. Leverett waiting for Navigato to get back in the righty batter's box. Looks back at the runner on second. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Sent foul, down one and two. One, two, checks his swing. Does he go around? Yeah, he does. And that is going to prompt a quick, oh, he's ejected. Alvarez coming in quickly to talk to home plate umpire Evan Johnson. Whatever Andrew Navigato said got him tossed immediately. That's the first ejection of this series. And Alvarez not happy with that call either. But out number two for Adam Leverett here. Waiting in the on-deck circle, Dylan Dingler. He's he's done it all today. A home run, a walk, reached on an error, scored three times. Alvarez doesn't get what he's looking for. Walks back down to third. And we'll have to watch to see who they put in defensively for Navigato in left. In the next inning, ejected on that strikeout. Here's Dylan Dingler. So they're, uh, I guess they're waiting for him to get out. That's so awkward. You got to walk all the way across the field because the clubhouse, the exit to the clubhouse is in left center, and he is going to take his sweet time getting off. He's not going to run. He is going to. Slowly walk. No equipment. Not bringing anything with him. Going to leave his glove in there, I guess. Helmet. Whatever. I mean, he is just going so slow out to center field. It's very awkward. So, runner on second and Dane Myers was hit and stole a bag. 
Adam Levert has struck out two batters here, so he's got two outs, and he'll face this heavy hitter in Dylan Dingler. Now he's going to start running. He's in dead center and taking him quite a bit of time. He'll start a little jog. That little jog you do when someone, like, lets you cross the road or, like, holds the door open for you, but you're, like, awkwardly far away and you, like, pick up a little jog. Now they finally close the door out in center field. He'll go back into the clubhouse here. And Leverett will see Dylan Dingler with a runner in scoring position and two away. Ball gets through the knees of Vito Frisia off to third is Dane Myers. And that puts a runner 90 feet from home. Vito coming out to say something to Adam Leverett here about what they want to do with Dylan Dingler. He'll go back behind the plate runner on third and two outs here. Bottom seven, Erie leads Redding five to two. When the fighting Phils come back up in the eighth, they'll have Conley, Graffinino, and Rojas. But first, Lev's got to get us out of this inning. He hits the inside corner off speed, one and one. Chases that off-speed pitch inside again, and Adam has him one and two. Trying to get out of this inning clean, a hit batter, a stolen base, and a wild pitch put Dane Myers on third. The righty has, has him in his sights. Here's the one-two with two outs. Down and inside, and it's even. Gets him swinging. Adam Leverett strikes out the side here. Strands a runner on third and keeps us in this game. The fight and fills down five to two, but it's their turn to bat. Top of the eighth coming up in just a second. Gear up for fight and fill season. Visit the Brentwood Industries Fight and Fills team store at First Energy Stadium or check out our online store 24 hours a day, seven days a week at rfills.com backslash shop. We have a wide variety of fight and fills, hats, t-shirts, kids apparel, and more. Looking for something new? Check out our latest selections of Los Luchadores de Redding and Redding Hot Dogs gear. Plus, throwback black R-Train R-Fills attire. Root for your fightings in style. Stop by the Brentwood Industries Fightings Team Store or rfills.com slash shop. The sound of an ice cold Corona is music to my ears. Oh! Run that back. Dope. Now drop that beat. And hit me with the hook, player. Hey, whatever you do with your fine life, just do you, player. Relax responsibly. Corona Extra Beer, imported by Crown Import, Chicago, Illinois. The fighting fills know who to call for trash and recycling services. A proven winner, J.P. Mascaro & Sons, the industry leader for over 50 years. Trust the familiar Mascaro Blue Elephant to provide dependable, quality service for your home or business. That's J.P. Mascaro & Sons, one of the top companies in its industry. Trash and recycling services for home, business, and industry. We are hiring and have open positions in Berks County. Check our website for open positions at jpmascaro.com or call 1-888-MASCARA. J.P. Mascaro and Sons, ready to serve you.
Top of the eighth, we go down by three to the Erie Seawolves. Jack Conley, A.J. Graffinino, and Johan Rojas are due up in this frame. A pitching change for the Seawolves. Adam Wolf comes in for Joe Navalon, and we'll see if the Vitans can attack the bullpen here. Dylan Rosa comes in for Navagato, who was ejected after arguing a strike three call. So that's who's out in left field right now. Wolf's first pitch to Conley hits the corner. 0 oh and 1. Jack 0 oh for 2 today. Try to turn it around here. Down 5 to 2. Six outs to go for the Fightins. And he pokes it the opposite way. Gets it into a big hole on the right side of the infield. And will start us off with a base hit and a runner on. That's how you turn the tides. That's how the momentum. Moving in our favor, here is A.J. Graffinino. Had a double and a run scored his last time up. Let's keep it moving. Smoked off the bat, but it's foul down the left field side. From the left side here against the lefty Wolf. Nino pokes this up the middle. Oh, it's right into the glove of Carpio. Oh, man, another double play. Can't believe that didn't get through and caught Jack off the bag too at first. It's the second time that's happened to the Fightins today. Carpio's making some gold glove plays out at second base. Here's Rojas, grounds right back up to the pitcher. An underhanded play by Adam Wolf ends the inning. And that's that. To the bottom half we go. I think we'll see somebody out of the bullpen here. Down 5-2 to two to Erie. K Pool and Spa offers a variety of expert services for both in and above ground pools and hot tubs. They provide the service for Pool Pavilion at the First Energy Stadium and keep it clean and maintained throughout the entire season. Based in Reading, Pennsylvania, they have been family owned and operated for 40 years. Turn to K Pool and Spa for the best value and professional service. International Fireworks is the official fireworks provider for the RFILS. International Fireworks shoots all 33 fireworks shows throughout the RFILS season, including six Mega Blast fireworks shows. International Fireworks also provides the pregame fireworks after the national anthem at each game. International Fireworks has a retail store in nearby Douglasville, Pennsylvania, where you can purchase all of your fireworks. Visit fireworksrus.com for more information about the International Fireworks retail store in Douglasville. Thanks again to International Fireworks, the official fireworks provider of the RFILs. Looking for the place to have the ultimate family fun at the Fight and Fills game? Look no further than Capital Blue Cross Funland. Capital Blue Cross Funland features the most exciting games and entertainment at the ballpark, including speed pitch, mini golf, ring toss and peach basket toss, mascot autograph booth, a bounce house, and the incredible giant inflatable slide. Bring your family to all the fun at their next R Phil's game at Capital Blue Cross Funland. Brian Marconi comes in for the fight and fills here to pitch the bottom of the eighth inning. He will see the seventh or nine batters, Michael De La Cruz, Gage Workman, and Louise Carpio. 
Fighting fills a leadoff hit, got tied up in another line drive double play to the second baseman. And they ended up going down very quickly in the top half, but they still have the ninth. But first, the bottom of the eighth. Marconi shoves a strike in there, oh, and one. Sun beginning to set here in Erie, PA. I like these six o'clock games, though. Obviously, you can't do these if you have fireworks every night like we do in Reading, but it's nice on the road. This grazes into the strike zone at the knees, oh, and two. This is chipped off the bat foul. He'll go again. Infield, outfield, back deep. Bottom of the eighth inning. Misses inside, one and two. Erie, two runs on six hits, three fightings, errors. Reading, two runs and six hits, three errors. Erie, five runs on seven hits. There's a ball outside, 2-2. Two, two. Reading, they've had the hits today. Just, I don't know, it just hasn't come together. And the damage could be worse. Erie's three for 14 with runners in scoring position today. This is sent foul. Get to go again. The lefty Marconi steps back the 2 2, popped up. At the shortstop position, Graffinino barely takes a step, just lifts his glove in the air and makes the catch. There's one. Adam Leverett, a really nice outing. An inning and a third, no hits, no runs, no walks. Struck out the side in the seventh, just hit a batter, but was able to work around him on third base. 19 pitches, that's really nice work. Transition to the bullpen has gone well for Adam Leverett. Marconi's got one out in the bottom of the eighth. Here is Gage Workman, who takes a pitch inside. When the fight and fills come up in the top of the ninth, they'll have Rijo, Amuziati, and Ortiz, who have not recorded a hit today. Reddy could score three runs in an inning. That's certainly, certainly possible. This hits the inside corner, 89 on the fastball, one and one. It's the outside corner, one and two. Philly and Pittsburgh till tied at zero, top of the fifth inning. Ranger Suarez allowing just one hit and one walk, striking out six. Ryan steps back, a big leg kick, the one-two shot to center field. Racing over Rojas on the run. He's there to make the catch, out number two. Lehigh Valley still leads Durham. It's four to two now, Sam Coonrod. And rehab out there. Struggle in a bit. Jersey Shore leads 5-0 over Wilmington. Andrew Painter's day is done after six innings, just five hits, one walk, five strikeouts, 82 for the number one prospect. And the Phillies organization, Cambed Rosian in for rehab there. Marconi gets, ooh, that doesn't hit the corner. That's outside, ball one to Luis Carpio. Trying to sit down the side before he has to see the top of the order. Carpio 0 for 3 today. Marconi deals. Misses inside this time. Now Vito's going to have a quick word with him. Of course he's seen Carpio quite a bit through the lineup.
Vito comes back behind the plate. Two outs here in the bottom of the eighth for Marconi. The Arfields trail 5-2. to two. He's trying to set them down and bring it back to the top of the ninth here. 2-0 hits at the knees. 2-1. and one. This is just low and inside, three and one. Coming set, glove at the chest. Stepping back, Marconi, the three, one, chopped up the middle. Vicuña Fields on the run to first, what a play. Marconi finally in the bottom of the eighth, sits down the side in order. The Arfields head to the top of the ninth, down by three. They'll have three outs, try to come up with a couple of runs. I think they could do it, stick around to find out. The Reading Fight Pills are pleased to present you with their classic game program, all electronically. This program has information on the coaching staff, player roster, and front office staff. It also includes feature stories and alumni reports on all of your favorite guys who spend time in baseball town. Visit rfills.com slash programs to check it out. Our Phil's fans can continue to expect great performances all season long on the Burks Commercial Roofing Stage. It's the home of great local talent, including the R. Phil's mascot band. Burke's Commercial Roofing prides itself on being a locally owned and operated company that puts an emphasis on customer service. They provide free on-site estimates and can handle any size repair, restoration, or replacement. Visit burkescommercialroofing.com or call 610-717-3949 for more information. And don't forget to sit back, relax, and enjoy the show at the Burke's Commercial Roofing stage at America's Classic Ballpark. At Savage 61, our goal is to assist you in making a confident decision. Our friendly professional staff members are available to answer your questions and listen to your needs. Whether you're shopping for a new or pre-owned vehicle, we're ready to help you with your search. Visit our dealership on Pottsville Pike. Top of the ninth we go here in Erie, Pennsylvania. Brian Marconi sat down the Seawolves in order to get out of the eighth. And now the R. Phils will come up to bat. Riho, Muziati, and Ortiz try to come up with at least three runs as Adam Wolf will get a second frame. Let up a hit to Jack Conley, but a big double play ball. Helped him get out of the inning. Riho takes a strike and then one inside, one and one. This is upstairs, two and one. Just trying to get a runner on here to start things off. Three outs left to go for the fight and fills. Rio smacks this into left. Coming in, Rosa makes the catch on the run. There's out number one. Here's Simone Muziati, who's 0 for 3 today. Muzi on the left side here against the lefty Wolf. First pitch strike, second one outside. There's a ball, two and one.
Tomorrow's game, a 105 start here in Erie as he takes a pitch inside, 3-1. and one. Looking forward to a nice day game. Actually, it'll be back-to-back -back day games tomorrow at 1. And a Tuesday in Reading is an 11 a.m. game, which is a fan favorite. I'm looking forward to that. Wolf kicks and fires. Muzi sends us up the first baseline. It gets away from Dane Myers. Tries to make a play to the covering Wolf, but Muzi runs through it. I think he took that off the hand. Oof. Trainer Andy Dodson's going to run out there and check on him. Ooh. Ooh, man. Manager Sean Williams coming over as well. So when Myers threw that ball back to the covering Wolf, it smacked Simone. So tomorrow's game will be Ethan Lindau, the lefty, versus Reese Olsen. They matched up in Tuesday's contest. We track back in my little book. Lindau went four. Nope, that's two weeks ago. Lindau went four and two-thirds, and Olsen went three and two-thirds. So we'll see how that game goes for the fighting Phils. Jalen Ortiz waiting to bat here. Muziati will be safe on first with a base hit. And he is going to stay in this game, thankfully. Oh, they give him an error for that. He doesn't even get the credit for the hit. Man had to take it to the hand. And he doesn't even get the hit. Runner on first with one out. Here's Jalen Ortiz. This is a big opportunity for Redding in the top of the ninth. Still capable of changing the outcome of this game. Jalen has stuck out three times today. Takes a first pitch ball. He likes to swing. What can he say? It's been working out for him very well as of late. As I said, last 10 games, batting 417. Lined right into the glove of the third baseman. Lipsius got a lot on it. But there is out number two. And now it's on the shoulders of Aldrum Corridor to keep the line moving here. <laughs> Muziati out on first. Reading down by three. This, the loudspeaker is so loud here, and there's not that many people in the park. There's a called strike. Sun beginning to set here in Erie, Pennsylvania. Corridor smacks this deep to left field. Rosa coming over in foul territory. He's in the bullpen. No catch signified by the umpire. And they're calling for the trainer here. No, they're good. The trainer came out. Now he's going back in. The thing with a three-man crew and the bullpens that are cut out is that you literally cannot see what's going on in there. Like, he sprinted out to make the call, but... Like, you don't know. You can't see anything. It's like behind the stands. Such an interesting ballpark. So corridor down 0-2. We'll get another chance with a runner on first and two outs here at the top of the ninth. The Arfields trail 5-2. to two. Time is called. The pitcher Wolf taking a beat off the mound. Now it comes set on the third base side of the rubber. This is sliced sharply past the shortstop Workman. Corridor gets himself safe on first, Muziati to second, and the fight and fills have something brewing with two outs. Here is Vito Frisha, who represents the tying run.
it was sharp. I'm not even sure that Workman got any part of it with his glove. And now we're going to see a visit from the manager, Gabe Alvarez. Infield coming in as well. Muziati on second, Corridor on first, and Vito Frisha up, down by three. They're going to make a pitching change for this final out. That's interesting. It's not as if those were Wolf's faults, an error for the first baseman, and they haven't decided what they're giving the shortstop there. But they're going to change pitchers here with two on and two out for the fight and fills. Vito Frisha is up here. Maybe they just don't want a lefty against the righty Frisha because they'll go with the righty. So we'll allow Erie to warm up their reliever. We'll take a quick break and be back in the top of the ninth. The Fighting Phil's trying to come up with three runs. The Enersys Power Alley Pub features a two-and-a-half-hour all-you-can-eat buffet, private bar with bartender, two rows of seats, bar stool seating, and four cafe tables. The pub provides your party a private area to enjoy the ball game away from other fans. The Enersys Power Alley Pub may accommodate groups of 40 to 60 people. Enjoy socializing with your group and watch the game with a unique vantage point. Highline Merchandising, formerly Textiles, is your local small business company that provides screen printing, design, and merchandising services for local, national, and international businesses, bands, shows, and festivals, including seven-time Emmy Award-winning show Schitt's Creek and Unsolved Mysteries. Visit our website at HighlineMerchandising.com. Celebrate the history of our national pastime at the National Baseball Hall of Fame and Museum in Cooperstown. See priceless treasures that will bring your baseball memories to life. Connect with events that have shaped and changed the game and our country. Didn't need a lot of time to warm up it is Zach Houston. And he will see Vito Frisha with Muziati on second and Aldrum Corridor on first to... Reaches on a fielder's choice that ends up being an error to the shortstop as Frisha takes a called strike. The R fills down 5-2. to two. Just trying to come up with one run. Frisha smacks this foul into the catcher's mask. He seems okay. Oh, and two. Muziati on second, Corridor on first. Two outs, top nine. Zach Houston looks back at second. The 0-2 to Vito. Tips it back, he'll go again. Redding fighting hard here. They've lost seven straight. Trying to change that late in this game. Two on, two out. Here's the 0-2. Called strike three. A caught looking ends the game and the fight fills. Lose eight straight. And that's a tough loss for Redding here. They played well. They took an early lead, but they just couldn't seal the deal over the Erie Seawolves as the fight fails fall five to two. Seven hits for Erie, six for the fight fills. They make three errors in the field and that certainly does not help their case. A leadoff home run from Johan Rojas, the bright spot in this game. And Adam Leverett, Brian Marconi looked really good in relief as well. And the good thing about baseball, there's always another one coming. Game number 96 of 138 comes here tomorrow. 
And uh, we'll finish up with a one o'clock game. Lefty Ethan Lindau on the rubber. Righty Reese Olsen for the Erie Seawolves. I think we're all looking forward to finishing up here and getting back to the home crowd of America's Classic Ballpark and First Energy Stadium. We'll need your support there, fans. So please turn up for the next series, August 2nd through the 7th. But your final score today, Erie 5, Reading 2. I'll see you tomorrow at 105.